Welcome back to the Lake of Rage podcast. I am not your host, Mellow underscore Magikarp. I am Grant Matthew, also known as Boo underscore CK. And today, I have two very special guests to help me close out season one of the Lake of Rage podcast. The first you might know as the host of the Lake of Rage podcast, <laughs> Kevin Clemente, Mellow underscore Magikarp. Mellow, how are you? I'm doing well. How you doing, Book? I'm all right. And the other you might know from his recent run in the Players' Cup 3, he also backed that up with a win last night in the Glimwood Challenge, his second in the tournament series. He is a widely recognized player in the community and the top streamer, in my opinion, Azul Garcia Griego. How are you, Azul? I'm doing pretty good today. Pretty good. Bro, good. Why did he get that massive intro? <laughs> <laughs> and then He's you just the say, and the guy who normally <laughs> posts does the podcast. <laughs> Oh, and this is his channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, by the way. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, we're going to start things off real quick with a quick speed dating. 20 questions uh, to see. I know Mello's very much anticipating this as he wants to set the record. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I think, Azul, if you could just deafen yourself for a quick minute. I've got the timer set. Oh, wait, like you don't want me to be able to hear him either? We we get the same yeah, questions. Yeah, because you'll know you'll yeah. You'll oh, know. okay, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> okay, he's deafened. <laughs> well, now, now I'm stressed. This is I, I set this up. You should be able to do well. Okay. Is it all math questions? Uh, there is a math question. <laughs> oh God. Let me all load right, my let calculator. Me know when yeah, let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. TV or movies? TV. Last TV show you watched? Uh, Great British Bake Off. Burgers or glizzies? <laughs> Burgers. Ketchup, mustard, or relish? Mustard. Corn or flour tortillas? Flour. Beans or rice? Beans. Super salad? Salad. Favorite salad dressing? Uh, blue, che blue cheese. Breakfast or brunch? Brunch. Disney, Cartoon Network, or Nickelodeon? Nickelodeon. Favorite generation of Pokemon? Uh, Gen 5. Favorite Pokemon? Uh, Gyarados. Favorite deck of all time? Zoro Garb and Expanded. Fourth Pokecom or first Great Ball? Fourth Pokecom. Control, Miller, Stall? Control. Pedro or Tord? Pedro. <laughs> six times nine? Uh, six times nine is 54. And that's time. Okay. Wow. And you and and you got it right. <laughs> Bro, that's easy. You just do the finger trick. You know how many that is? 17. Mel. Yo, let's go. 17. <laughs> <I think. laughs> Your boy that's out pretty here. Good. What's the record? That's I don't think that's the record. I, I, I think that tied Evie maybe? No, it wasn't. It was like Ozzy, I think. <laughs> or Ozzy or Evie. Yeah, somebody I think 17 was the number. Yo, let's go. <laughs> All, All right, right, I didn't embarrass uh, myself. That's what matters. Yeah. You could come back. All, All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I won't tell you how many you got, but... All right. You ready for this, as well? So what am I... What am I, what am I trying to... Am I trying to pick my answer, or am I it's, trying to guess something? It'll be this or that, or favorite this. Something okay, like okay, that. Okay. Pretty easy. <laughs> Speed run. Ready? Mm -hmm. Get his, and it's uh, 20 questions, one minute. Ready? Mm -hmm. TV or movies? Uh, movies. Last movie you watched? Uh, More Combat. Burgers or Glizzies? Burgers. Ketchup, mustard, or relish? Ketchup. Corn or flour tortillas? Flour. Beans or rice? Rice. Super salad? Salad. Favorite salad dressing? Uh, ranch. Breakfast or brunch? Uh, brunch. Disney, Cartoon Network, or Nickelodeon? Disney. Favorite generation of Pokemon? Doesn't matter. Favorite Pokemon? Doesn't matter. Favorite deck of all time? Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth Pokecom or first Great Ball? Fourth Pokecom. Control, Miller Stall? Uh, control. American Dad or Pram? Uh, AD. Six times nine? <laughs> uh, was it? Uh, 54? And that's time. <laughs> it, it, it is it is 54 <laughs> if you got that you might have got to the uh to to the record setting question 
<laughs> no, he, that that would be an asterisk next to that. He literally yeah. said, "Doesn't matter." I, for I, I, well, you've counted pass before. I that is. True. I went back. I, I checked is, the vods. I have. <laughs> but like that's my answer. That's my answer. Is it doesn't matter. It, Bro, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Yeah, that's better than pass. Not for those, no, favorite, Not for those. favorite Pokemon. <laughs> that's like the most important question. No. I mean, just say, y'all have to just say one. So why AD over Bran? <laughs> is it because he's yeah. It's his house. I don't know. I just thought that'd be like that'd be a funny switch up. I don't know. That's it. <laughs> oh yeah, it is his house too. I guess I'd rather not get out of the kick kick get, get get kicked out of the house. That's a good. That's a good one too. <laughs> Uh, the next question was favorite mod, and for Kevin, it'd be other than your wife. Okay, good. <laughs> I was gonna say like Betty <laughs> by far. Like I yeah. can't answer something else. <laughs> I, I I literally have it in parentheses. Other than your wife. <laughs> Bro, slap in oh, the chat. I don't, I don't know if I can say it. S- Sancho all day. Sorry, boo. <laughs> that's fine. No, that's fair. Uh, and the answer to Pedro Tord was actually Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was the only one I asked a different question for. Was, was that like pa- favorite European? Yeah, I asked, him, <laughs> I asked him Pedro or Tord, and I asked you American Dad or Pram. I see okay. my answer. <laughs> What's next on the agenda here? That was fun. <laughs> I gotta go look in Evie's corner. Next up on the agenda is uh, the Players Cup 4 stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, if only we had an expert with the Players' Cup here to talk about it. Hey, I missed qualifying for Players' Cup 3, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty <laughs> goaded on that. Yeah, so we just should talk about that in general, right? Like, you didn't qualify, Azul did, but you both did all of your qualifications for PC3 on stream, right? Yeah. yeah. I think I played, like, three off stream, and those were, like, <laughs> I got two first and a second. I probably should have kept doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think there definitely is like a, like, I think a slight advantage to playing off stream for sure. A little bit more focused, uh, especially with the the players cup ones, because there's so much downtime in between the the rounds. Like you're always talking to chat so much and distracted. And then there's also like, I mean, some people are gonna try and snipe you, right? There's this, you're gonna get sniped. And then there's also a lot of people just want to be in your tournament, of course, like with the streamer. So that's like another thing. So the the quality of player, I feel like, is usually a little bit higher than just like. Full RNG, random from the from the pool of PTCGO. So that'd be interesting. I'd actually be super curious to. I don't want to test it because honestly, I hate the qualification process with a passion. And it's like, well, if I'm going to stream and I'm going to play qualifiers, I'm going to do both at the same time. Yeah, but I'd be curious to see if there actually is a difference because in theory there is, right? Like you're probably like me. You get people after the tournament, they'll show up in your chat and they'll be like, "GGs." It's like, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> which is like fine that thing's like it's like fine for them to like want to play but that definitely is like i think it's just like on average the quality of player who watches us as competitive pokemon players who stream they're going to be better than the average player who you just hit when you just queue up a random tournament without anyone trying to snipe you right but the average player who would like try and get into your lobby which is also it's kind of just like fine you're streaming it's whatever mm-hmm. right if they're not hard sniping that's the only thing where you're like i don't want you to have my stream open but you know if you try and play in the same tournament as me that's fine right uh, especially like I try and hide the deck I pick. Um, it's like a little bit of protection, I guess. Why not? Like that's something I can do. I'm still live. I don't have a delay, but I can like hide what deck I'm picking before I go into each tournament. Um, but yeah, I bet the the average player is just not going to be as good as the average person who's just trying to get into our lobby through the through the chat. Is there any the advantage chat. to like the time that you stream at or the time that you try and qualify? Like I I was watching Pedro this morning. And he was hitting, you know, different names, like mostly European names. Like, is there any strategy to that? Or is it just do it when you can and high traffic, low traffic? I mean, I've run into everyone that you can imagine. Because, like, it's late time for Europe for me, but I've run into Nico. I've run into Tord. And then it's, you know, afternoon-ish, early evening for NA. But I've run into Isaiah Bradner and Isaiah Williams when he was playing. And, you know, so I've, I don't know. <laughs> it, I, I just feel like I run into everyone at every time anyway, so I don't think it makes a huge difference. But I know people will disagree with that. Like, there's some people. It's like I play at this time because everyone sucks. It's like, oh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, there might be some sweet spot time out there. But when it is like, <clears throat> when it's like global, you're gonna be those other times. There's probably a sweet spot to avoid Europe slash like an awkward time for America in general. That would probably be it. I don't know what 
when that would be. Um, <clears throat> cause Latin America is pretty close to American times, right? Pretty close. Yeah. So, um, so it just be Australia. That's really off, but they don't have a ton of players even playing. Um, and like the Australian talent, I feel like is really top heavy. Like their top players are really, really good. I think there is definitely like a, a bigger separation there, but they're like, um, they don't, so, they don't have enough to fill out their, their, yeah, they don't have uh, enough to fill out. Their okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. you, you get one point you're in. Yeah. There's like a. There's not that many. There's not that many Australian players to even try and avoid anyway. So it would be like there, there's probably a, there's probably a perfect time out there, but I have no idea what it is. I don't like playing the first week because I feel like there's a lot more ADP. I don't think that was really true though for Players Cup three, but one and two there was a lot of ADP in the first week, week and a half. But I, Players Cup three I avoided playing for like the first two weeks, but I don't think there was actually that much ADP in the first couple of weeks. I feel like Somebody's... there was more eternitas as the tournament went on. At least that's yeah. what I found because I kind of split it all up and. Boy, there was like no Eternatus ever, and then suddenly I'm like, peak. And then you just run into all the Eternatus in the world, which makes sense. It was the BDIF by the end of that format. Like, it was pretty, pretty clearly the top tier deck. But so I assume then ADP was before that, but like you, I didn't use a ton of keys early. So I don't know for sure. ADP is the safety pick. It, you know, has roughly 50 50 matchups with everybody, right? Oh. So it's a safe comfort to start your runoff with before you want to, t you know, take a risk, build up your points. I just hate that deck, man. <laughs> <laughs> just playing it, playing against it's just like, why am I even bothering? Why don't I just go do literally <laughs> anything else right now? <laughs> I don't know. It's well, just, it, it pilots itself. It's not fun. I understand it's powerful. Like 100%. I understand there yeah. are decisions to be made. Like a good player playing ADP will do better than a bad player, but uh, it's just like L I G X sick <laughs> GGs. Well, we're seeing that in Pika Realm on their last legs here. Uh, what do you mean last legs? What? We get a few more. We get a few more months with it before it rotates. Oh yeah, I was gonna say Peak still gonna be, the BDIF. It's gonna be sad <laughs> to see sad to see Peak go for sure. Uh, I don't think anyone's gonna wish uh adp was coming back maybe me but that's it <laughs> <laughs> me and soda <laughs> recently the pog format came back into like discussion and i remember last pog format you know they essentially like where worlds replacement type thing i was like i'm gonna play peak it's my last chance to play peak realm till it's no longer good ever again <laughs> <laughs> played a heck of a lot of peak since then <laughs> yeah and then sack brought it back yeah <laughs> <laughs> the broken hammers. We uh we queued up in the team challenge against um an ADP that had the peak hammers two yell grunt package. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was literally the same deck. It's like, all right, well we'll take that. <laughs> I don't so, I don't I, think that's how it works. <laughs> uh I lost to one of those and I went in into phase two for chill. It was literally just the anti or beetle ADP deck. Four hammers, two yell guns, four Marnies. And I was like, what? It, you got tweeted out about Ore Beetle today, Azul. What do you what do you yeah. think about the deck? Ooh. I mean I it's like Gamer likes it. Yeah. I mean it has its good matchup. It's like it's obviously not like one of the most powerful decks, but it's like solid. There's a lot of decks that are like really solid in the meta overall. Um that can kind of just be played if you want to play them. Like and they're a little bit more obscure. So if you just understand the matchups better than your opponent, I think that's the biggest they're those kind of decks' biggest advantage. Like Orbital would be one of them. It's like if you just know all your matchups, you play against someone who just doesn't know what your deck does in the matchup, then that's your that's that's part of the advantage of playing a deck like that. All those decks are like good. Like the Orbital, the Rillaboom decks, or like Victory Scorch, very obscure, not very powerful deck. Like, but like if you know your matchups, it's like not bad. Yeah, I was going to wonder, boom. what are the, like, what are the picks for? Do you do you literally just, like, go to your channel fireball rankings and be like, whatever's number one is the play? Or do we approach this differently? <laughs> for what, for Players Cup? Yeah, for the qualifiers, not the actual tournament. Like, what should people play, or what should, what am I going to play? I guess, like, if you're a people, and you're not a Zul GG, you're an average person. We've seen you pick up a, any deck and do Yeah, <laughs> you don't count. I mean... <laughs> You could play. I mean, you could basically play anything, to be honest. Like, there's then the qualifiers. Like I'm saying, like on average, like I said, like the qualifiers. I think get harder. Like, if you're like a streamer, like I said, like if you're streaming your qualifiers, the, the level of like it feels like maybe and maybe I'm wrong, but like there's like a 
even if you just add the aspect of like interacting with chat and streaming while you're playing, that's like enough to make them that much harder, right? So, um, but if you're just on average, I think you can pretty much play anything because like I think the average hits you'll hit in the in the tournaments will just be like you can pretty much play any like reasonable deck, right? I don't you shouldn't be playing Maractus or something, but you'll probably get a dub with Maractus. <laughs> it wouldn't be that ridiculous. Um, but like yeah, I think like the uh, the average opponents and decks you'll play against, you could probably get away with uh playing pretty much any reasonable deck and you'll probably qualify like dustin qualified with orbital uh only playing orbital in the last in players cup three like um i think knowing your deck just knowing the deck and making sure you know the matchups is just the most important part and then if you do if you know that you can kind of play whatever you want i think for the most part like it's not too much uh you don't have to dwell on it too much or anything like uh players cup two whoever just played luke metal the whole time and got the most points and then couldn't play in the tournament so like i mean just played luke, luke just played luke metal the whole time right there's welder decks out there but just rock and luke metal so like pretty much do whatever you want as long as the deck's reasonable right so i have a follow-up question to that just because i i've heard this rant on your stream anyone who's watched your stream which if they watch me there's literally no way they haven't found you already so they might have heard it too but <laughs> how do you approach it how do you actually convince yourself like this deck takes an auto loss and that's fine. I mean, for me, it's like if I think it's just good enough in the meta overall, besides that, then it's just like, then that is just enough. Like, like there's always like you can go and like I've done this before. Like, I, the one that I always use is when I played Glissopod Garb at Madison Regionals. I got second with the quad uh, enhanced hammers. I was like, I want to beat Zork. I body Greninja. So, like, there'll be those good players who come through as Greninja. I tied a Greninja. I should have gone 9 0 that tournament on the Swiss day one, but I tied a Greninja because I played slow. Um, yeah, I was, uh, <laughs> and then I tied Mahone. Maybe I wouldn't have been able to beat Mahone. Me and Mahone tied in the last round as well. So I went like 7 2. But I was like, I lose to Gardvor. But I was like, good players are not going to play Gardvor. I don't think Gardvor is very good right now. Um, I could take two losses in day one. So if I hit two Gardvors somehow, I'll go, I'll go 7 2 into day two. I didn't hit a single guard war, so I went 7 2 into day two, and no guard wars made day two because, like, it, they shouldn't. And it was a very popular deck. I think it was maybe the most popular deck was guard war, second most popular deck at that tournament. Like, it was a super popular deck, right? But I was like, it's not good. It's going to lose. Uh, <clears throat> good players aren't going to play it. And that's something you can factor into more so in, like, it's hard to do in these online tournaments because the meta is definitely doesn't move the way it does in regionals. Mm -hmm. But back in regionals, I would be like, good players are not going to play this deck. If I think I can get to day two, then I don't have to worry about that deck anymore. And that's what that was exactly what happened in that tournament. There was like two guard wars in day two, I think. None of them were piloted by players I would consider to be like top players. So I was like, you know, once again, if I take one L to one of the guard wars, I just have to go four and one, and then I still make top eight, right? So um you can go that far um and think about it a little bit further, but it's a little bit easier to do in regional level events than uh online events because the meta is it just doesn't move, it doesn't flow the same way it does in like uh, real life regionals. People people aren't trying as hard, I think, is the biggest thing. Um, and then definitely, like the, like I've said before, and it's not like a bad thing, but the talent pool overall is not as high. Like on these online events, when you compare it, even if it's the same size as a regional, the talent pool just isn't as high when you compare it to like an 800 person standard uh, regionals in, in like North America or something. If you compare that to an 800 person online event it's just not not quite there and that definitely affects what decks will do well and like how the meta can flow and stuff i don't know so there's more levels to it in re in like real life regionals but in online it's a little bit less easy to predict i guess so, but think, like if you're just taking one the auto loss to like one of the top five decks and that's just like fine do you think the way regionals go when we get back to IRL will be different now that we've seen how a meta can shift like during the day you know, people see tournament results and it changes that rapidly versus we were looking on Poka stats to see cup results and things like that, talking to your network of people. Now that we have broader networks and things like that, how do you see the future of that going? Um, You mean like regional to regional or like Saturday to Sunday? Like cup Re to cup? Like, yeah, regionals and cups, I guess. the whole The whole new IRL whenever we get there. I mean, a week, a week to week for a regional was usually enough time for her to like make the shift. Um, but I just felt like there was like bigger impacts. Like you'd have like a group of top players play a deck that was like a known deck, but they would have a tech for like the biggest deck from last last week's regional, and they would just beat that, and then they would still be playing that really good deck. And you just don't see that as much in these online tournaments. Like like that's like a big thing, and like. And then that was like a factor where it'd be like, okay, what do we think the best player? Like that was something that I we would always talk about. Is what do we think the best players are bringing? That's something that like like when I was in DDG working with those guys, that's something we focus on a lot. Is what is what are the Europeans bringing? Uh, and then eventually, you know, what are what is Bradner and crew bringing? 
um, what do we think they're going to bring? And thankfully, they brought Peak a lot, so that was really easy sometimes. But um, <laughs> <laughs> like that's way less of a focus on online, online tournaments. I feel like no one really tries to take that next level because it's just kind of unnecessary. Um, but I feel like in in general with real life tournaments, when they come back, like we, a week is like more than enough time for our meta to like fully adjust. Um, and then, like I mean, Saturday to Sunday, I feel like I meta game like locally pretty pretty hard personally. Like like. One day, uh, I don't know. So I try and think of a deck. Uh, I think I don't know. One deck does really well, so a deck counters that deck. So I know that's going to show up tomorrow. So I either play that deck myself and beat the mirror, or I play a deck that beats both those decks. Like the deck that just won yesterday, going into Sunday, uh, and the deck that beats that deck, or I play the deck that beats that deck and I tech for the mirror match as well. So um, I feel like I already did that quite a bit personally, like for like League Cups and League Challenges. And like the meta did shift, and like there was those shifts, those kind of predictable shifts to like play around as well. Um, so I think that's already like happened. I don't think there's like any more that this online, the way the online has been playing, the online tournaments play out as far as meta shifts go, that'll like really add to IRL tournaments. I think it's just kind of different. And a lot of it is people taking it less seriously, the talent pool overall being lower. Um, so there's less game breaking stuff ca coming out uh, week to week or, you know, big event to big event. Um, we see a lot more like repeated stuff, you know, so so put a fan of waves and a stealthy hood, but like everyone kind of knew that was happening. And who knows, maybe like, the card game's gotten to a point where the meta share or the, the information share is so high that it's harder to make those big game breaking decks um, out of nowhere or big changes to a deck. Um, so we'll have to see how that kind of works when we get back to uh, real life. But um, I don't expect it to be too much different. And I guess closed deck lists too will be a big thing. Bro, I can't yeah. wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't hide the spicy text right now. <laughs> I never played a spicy tech in my life, but I like, I'm not that person. I'm just. Bro, I took towards school of deck building. Four, 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 four. I'm sure it's good. <laughs> but just, I don't know. Closed deck lists just feel so good sometimes. Like going back, we played a little bit of in person, and it's just like, oh, I have to actually think now. Like, does this Urshifu play Mimikyu or not? Ooh, I have to actually, like, <laughs> I don't know. It feels nice having those actual decisions of like, well, what do I think they're playing? Like, did they tech this? Did they not tech this? But that's a different, uh, that's a different topic. <laughs> Reminder to chat to submit questions for the end. Uh, I haven't seen any uh, physically submitted, but I see people asking questions. We have sixteen. <laughs> oh, I actually, I actually wish that they would do. <laughs> I wish they would do more closed deck list. Like I think all the all the invitationals should be closed deck list, just to kind of switch it up. Because like I think everyone agrees, open deck list isn't that much more skillful. It might be, and I don't even know if one is more skillful than the other. It might just be different. I think that might be at least at, at least it's fair to say that there's different aspects of skill that get involved when you have open or closed deck lists. But I think like the invitationals and stuff where it's like, we should be able to trust these people not mm -hmm. to cheat. And it's such a small tournament that it's easier to keep an eye on um, that those should be just closed deck lists. So just switch it up. Cause like I played in a closed deck list tournament invitational. I don't know which one it was, but it was just like a nice switch up. It was like, oh, we're doing closed deck. List. It, was a, it was one of the like throwback tournaments. Like I was playing Buzz Rock or something. Oh no, I was playing oh. Cly Clive's deck, Zygarde. All of Vision's yeah. tournaments have been closed deck lists. Yeah, and it was like a nice switch up. Yeah. And it's not like I don't like I don't know personally, like I haven't really thought about it too much if one is better than the other or more skillful or not. They're definitely different and they require a different set of skills to apply to the game while you're playing it. But it's just nice to have the switch up for sure. And I understand definitely majority of online de tournaments with the the big ones, they gotta be like closed deck list, right? Or open deck list, my bad. They have to be open deck list because oh, it's so easy to cheat. Um and people would definitely take advantage of that for sure. I mean, I would hope they wouldn't, but they would. <laughs> so they would. So it's nice. It would be nice to just have more, like, especially the smaller or invitational tournaments be uh, closed deck list for sure. So like that's how the sun Sunday Open started, right? Oh, because yeah, you could change every round too. List, yeah. The one I won, yeah. I kept changing my tech every round because I couldn't decide if Feeny <laughs> or Apalm was good. I never used either of them. They were both trash. But <laughs> uh, that I so this is kind of going into the next segment. But that kind of made me think uh, when I was watching you restream the finals. There's only 16 people. Every single game is recorded. Do you think moving forward the global finals for the Players Cup could and or should be closed deck list, or do you like the consistency of keeping it open? Because you, no, no, you I think, I think at that point, right? Yeah, and, and if they do, they just get kind of disqualified. Like it's all recorded, so like the what's it called? They could have like I don't know whoever could, goes over stuff. Just have someone who knows the game go over. Have Puka, like yo Puka, do you want to work some overtime? We got some bots for you to watch and just confirm that it works with the deck list and he's like all right sure i got nothing better to do you know he's at home drinking tea or whatever goes over a couple <laughs> bots um 
So I think, I mean, just I think yes, just because it's nice to have the switch up. So I would just say yes. Like, it would be nice if they did a closed deck list. So I would vote, my vote would be yes, just because I would like more stuff to be closed deck list when it's like that smaller environment, 16 people, invitational, whatever. Um, so yeah, I would like to see that. It would be cool. Whenever it can be done to like minimize the cheating, it should be done, I think. Because the switch up is just really nice. And if you get caught in an invitational, then take it up with yeah. the <laughs> You wouldn't even just get like DQ from the event. You'd be definitely like, I mean, everyone would know you'd just be like freaking yeah. exiled from the community. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We ready to move on? Yeah, to the... I was going to say, should we switch to that? That feels like a good transition into the, yeah. uh, the actual like interview, I guess. Because like, I don't know, man, you won the Glimwood Challenge as well. I feel like we need to talk about that. <laughs> That's his second one. He won two now. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> Yeah, he won the bro, second one. I'm the Glenwood one. King, bro. Yeah. Yo, do we own the Impy Pimps now? <laughs> They're done, bro. <laughs> they got cute to get that free double with us with Danny bringing control, but that's it. I'm taking over the Glenwood, bro. <laughs> They're ours. Max, we're taking the podcast, <laughs> we're taking the team, then we're dismantling the team. We don't really want it. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> Dan, Dan wanted to bring a uh, deck to show his skill. <clears throat> so... <laughs> uh all right uh kevin i'll let you lead off the interview for pc3 so, i guess the <laughs> biggest question i have is kind of like the deck building process so you've said publicly you worked with mike fouché who also made global finals mm -hmm. who approached who what ideas was it just automatically like rap strike urshifu's broken let's build it or was there some like how did that whole discussion go and come about and um i mean he asked me if i wanted to work together and i was like sure why not because i didn't really have anyone else who was like i mean i didn't know really anyone else who was in the finals so i was like yeah sure why not um i didn't have any plans to like reach out to anyone else either so i was like sure so we just kind of we didn't like ever test we just talked ideas um and then shared our results but all my results were just me streaming so it was like anything i picked up from that and then you know talked about text and what was good like we were we were both like initially like uh i think we were like trying out rapid because it was like the new cool deck to try out so of course we were trying it out and we both like were on Luke Metal for a bit. Like I think we both mentioned Luke Metal to each other, and we're like, it seems really good. But then you know, Phoebe Eternus is happening. We're like, okay, if Welder decks are a thing, and Phoebe Eternus is a thing. There's no reason to bring Luke Metal. We also don't think anyone will bring Luke Metal. There's no reason for anyone to play Luke Metal. It doesn't make any sense. So we immediately like check check that off our list of being like, we're not going to play it. No one will play it. Um, and we came to the same conclusion for Decidueye, Welder decks plus Eternus Phoebe can beat it. Um, and at that point, I was like, kind of like Eternus might just be the best deck in the format. Um, I think it is still really really good um besides the rapid strike matchup like it's just it's insanely good like when you're like when you body peak your favorite against adp you can beat lmz like what beats you you beat the mewtwo decks like it's only rapid strike like you can lose to a lot of those decks at any of those decks but it's really only rapid strike that's like hard keeps it in check um because it is so popular right now and i, I guess random stuff like decidueye but um, that's not a deck yeah <laughs> it's, a, it's a deck when it wins otherwise it's not a deck exactly. <laughs> like when it wins oh decidueye oh no <laughs> and when it does back to back then people tech for it but if they don't win if you don't win back to back if decidueye does not win back to back then no one cares about it so has to win back to back tournaments um but yeah then we just like we were tossing around ideas um it came around to the point where he was like his his fallback was pikaram obviously and i was like i i, I my fallback temple zard and the more i thought about it i was like i might just play temple zard uh, and then we were like, the Australians are probably bringing Pikaram. So we kind of put the Australians on Pikaram. Um, <laughs> the Pikaram players are just stubborn and don't put it down. So they're, that's like the new stubborn deck. It's like the Pikaram players, they just won't put Pikaram down. Um, you can just mention so, my name if you want. It's fine. <laughs> you, Justin Bukhari, <laughs> Isaiah Bradner. Or was it Bradner one or not Isaiah? You, Justin Bukhari, uh, the Australians, uh, all of them. <laughs> can you imagine playing in the regional qualifiers it's just peek around mirrors every single round like that'd be so annoying that's what i've heard um, right like every, like they because they all work together too so it's a 60 card mirror over and over again yeah all 100 and what 15 of them 60 card peek around mirror. <laughs> how many how many people did they actually get i don't actually know how many they got for there they get 128 um, i don't know how many people actually registered but yeah um but yeah we just kind of like came to like we talked about like our backups um, and he seemed like he was a little bit interested in, in Tempo's art at some point. Um, uh, but then he was like, I, there's no way I played enough games with it. And then once like, we kind of like, were like, oh, the Australians are going to bring Picaram. We were like, okay, I, I don't want to play Tempo's art. He was still like his, his backup Picaram. So I was like, well, now I have to play Rapid Strike. Um, but we were like, we both thought it was a very powerful deck and like overall very good. Especially if we thought Australians are bringing Picaram and Eternatus might be the best deck in the format. 
it's kind of just a good play and you can beat like anything else um as long as there's nothing like too psychic heavy which there really wasn't it was just like mewtwo decks but we we're like well if we put a mimic you we beat the first layer of like the out meta in the rapid strike being like oh if they're bringing rapid strike we bring mewtwo all right then we bring P mimic you and if no one goes the second level and brings hood or like has some other shenanigans like a rillaboom mewtwo where you bring the mewtwo in out of nowhere then like we just win we win the meta the meta of one-upping each other right so we just put the mimic you in which wasn't super popular at the time as well so we didn't expect anyone to bring an answer to it like no answer had no one was playing answers to mimic you so we're like we just put that in there uh, and I was like, Karate Belt just seems really good. Like, I just thought, like, Karate Belt and Recess Sam added a lot of depth to the deck. And I think there's a bigger advantage to play those kind of cards when you play against better players. Because it's it's just like having more outs against them. Like, they know what they have to play around, and they know to play around those cards now. But but now they have to play around them. It's not like where you're like, you know, if I get this Karate Belt, I, I win the game if you take that knockout. And they're like, eh. and you play against, you know, just... Joe Shimo, and they say, I'm taking the knockout anyways. You're like, well, if I get this, and then you whiff, you're like, well, that sucks. But the better player is going to play around that, right? So there is like a level to that. I mean, then most of the time you do hit it, and you're like, all right, all right, well, then you punish the player, right? But the better player plays around it. But like, adds like, I don't know, it just adds like another level to the game to play cards like Karate Battle and Reset Sam. So I was like, very convinced I wanted to play those cards. And we didn't play Phoebe because we didn't expect Luke Vandal, we didn't expect Decidueye. And we were like, Cheryl's cool, but then you have to play Mewtwo. And Mewtwo is not that great. Um, we have like three boss and a great catcher. Uh, so you only really recover the Marnie with it ever. So we just put a fourth Marnie in over Mewtwo instead of Mewtwo because we weren't going to play Phoebe. And Cheryl was like, okay, <clears throat> way better than this is in Sino build for sure because you like set up and then like you can draw cards and play the Cheryl, which is pretty good. But um, yeah, and then we just decided, all right, let's play. We, ro we locked it in and that was it play did you have with the deck before you decided to do that um i mean i played that one tournament with it where i had the electro charge <laughs> <laughs> but i think that that was like the only tournament i played in i didn't i played it a little bit on ladder before as well I when, think was basically when did you decide it. to cut the electro charger did that did you bring that up <laughs> no <laughs> the electro charger did not come up that's make them play around <laughs> make them play around that <laughs> make them play around the electro oh yeah i don't know those cards like it feels like it adds that was like my idea in my head when i thought about them and they're definitely good cards i don't know if i'd continue to play the karate belt the reset stamp i think is still very very powerful though um but they just add so much more depth like if you like imagine like being like you could not play reset stamp or you could it'd be like well that sounds pretty good to have it you could not play karate belt or you could it's like well it sounds good to have it right like that's the kind of way i thought about it in my head it's just like it can be game changer, especially what you can do with Karate Belt with the deck. You can go like boss, Karate Belt, Rapid Strike, hit two things, pass. They go, uh, okay, hit. And you go, all right, attach another one, hit two things, you lose. Like you can be so far behind or even a little bit behind and you just start rapid flowing every single turn in a row. And you just win the game. Um, so I feel like it adds a ton of depth to the deck to have around. It's not necessary though, especially with so many people playing Mew. Sometimes you have to take the Gale Thrust route, anyways. Seems like such a strong deck with Probat, you know, being. And Dedenne being weak to it, being able yeah. to put some put some splash damage early and then come clean that up and kill the other one for four yeah. prizes. It just seems like setting up your prizes is a much more thinking game, but like it's available most of the time because people have to play those cards to draw into, you know, get themselves set up. Yeah, that's what I've been saying about Rapid Strike a lot recently. It's like anyone can like pick up the deck and hit for 150 over and over again, but to like see the the path you can take to get your six prize cards that is most optimal is like very hard to do. That's why like that's why I feel like it's its success rate is pretty poor right now in tournaments. It's just like it's hard to see the path. Like we had Stefan Ivanov, great player, right? Get second in a tournament with Rapid Strike uh this week. Um, but besides that, I feel like it's kind of been struggling. But it's it's a hard deck to play. Like if you just sit there and do 150 over and over again, the deck's not that good. But when you apply like the the Pass you can take with rapid flow and like the way you can set up your prize cards with the deck so you never have to draw more than six prize cards and you just try and play as efficiently as possible into just getting enough damage and play to draw six prize cards. Um, that's something you can have a lot of control over with as well with the GMAC rapid flow, which is only actually not just only drawing six prize cards, but doing like almost the exact amount of damage to draw six prize cards as well. You'd have like you can make it so you have like no wasted damage in play, which is like it's like, well, if you do way more damage, then that's great because you, I mean, it doesn't seem like a bad thing, right? Like you just put a bunch of extra damage in play, it doesn't seem bad if you still win, right? But when you can be that like precise with how you draw your prize cards and the damage you put in play, uh, the deck's pretty pretty good. But like, it's definitely like a big learning curve from just, you know, 150, retreat 150, retreat 150 to like stopping, KOing this, hitting this, using GMAX Rapid Flow and so on. So definitely I mean, another level to the deck. It doesn't sound terrible with if you splash a bunch of Cheryls in there. 
<laughs> that can buy you some time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Cheryls can buy you a little time. I'm I'm a big Cheryl stan. No, I think the Cheryl's really good. In the Jirachi build, it's a lot harder to pull off consistently. Uh, if you can do it, it's great. But I think that's another thing why I didn't want to play Cheryl is because I feel like you have to play two to three air balloon because that's like another piece you want in play already. If you have the karate, like if you don't have an air balloon in play when you Cheryl, that's like you need the switch card to the bench, back to the active, or go to a bench. But if you have the air balloon on there prepped, they marnie you, you get the Cheryl, you're like, all right, Cheryl, balloon, retreat to new Urshifu attack, right? But if you have only one balloon in the deck or you already, like, or you have the karate belt on your active, you can't even balloon it. Like, that's like another reason I wasn't a huge fan of like considering Cheryl in the list of me and Fouché played was because I was like so hooked on the karate belt. No, I love karate belt. It's definitely, I've only played the Sinchino version because, you know, I, I simp toward, but like yeah. the karate belt has <laughs> come in so much handy. And I feel like also, like you said, when people play Cheryl, they're just like, haha, Cheryl 300 damage, hit for 30. And then you're like, okay, good turn. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, basically you didn't you just kind of like reset yourself to the same position. That's why like the Sincina build with Cheryl, way better you draw the extra cards. It's hard. in the Jirachi build, I would like if you're playing Cheryl, I'd even maybe go up to like three air balloon to be honest. If you're like hooked on wanting to play Cheryl, because like you need just as much in play as possible to just make it so when you hit the Cheryl, you're not just doing 30 damage. Cause then they just hit you again and you're like, Well, I'm back right to where I was where I was losing. That's why I played the Cheryl. Now I'm still losing. So oh wait, actually, boo ask one of your <laughs> okay <laughs> okay here's one uh i know you touched you briefly touched on it in chat yesterday the baby trio coin and the <laughs> lightning deck box <laughs> well, uh, the, yeah the <laughs> the box, I, just wanted, I just wanted to be i want to see if it like how it felt to be one of those players who like plays on ladder and they they're playing ADP, but they have a lightning deck box. It could be Picaram. Oh, it's ADP. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, it doesn't matter in an open deckless tournament, but I was like, what is the feeling like? Uh, and then the baby trio coin, I don't think we had a ton of access because a lot of people had the baby trio coin. If I remember correctly, there wasn't many coins to choose from, and that was just the best one. I think there was a blue one, baby trio, and then the, is there a standard coin? Like, is there like a, it's like a red know. Arceus, right? Arceus, yeah. That might be, it, it might have been that, a blue one, and the baby trio. So I just picked the baby trio one. Because there wasn't very many options, if I remember correctly, on the on the master accounts. Why don't they have like questions. a Pokeball? Why isn't the default one a Pokeball coin? Why don't they have a yeah, default Pokeball yeah. coin? Do we even have a Pokeball coin on PTCGO? I don't no, think the, so. The backside is. Yeah, yeah, the backside is a Pokeball. Well, there could be one on the front, too. But then Colored. you can't tell heads from tails. What yeah. are you going to do? I'll, st I'll send a, su a support ticket. <laughs> <laughs> don't fix the game, just give us a Pokeball coin. Yeah, ranked ladder or Pokeball coin. <laughs> so, I have a question about like the logistics of like what does off stream Azul playing PTCGO look like? Because I imagine you've like never played off stream, not on YouTube until that tournament. I don't know if that's actually true, but like, are you just like vibing to music? Is it like, like what what is it like? What are you doing? Um, it's kind of like it's just like the same thing that I'm doing on stream, except I'm not talking to chat. That's basically it. I don't talk out loud, uh, but otherwise, it's kind of the same thing. I don't know, not too much of a difference. Okay, you don't have like Netflix on another screen or something like that. No, I don't even remember if I was listening to music. <clears throat> I maybe did have music on, I don't remember, but I mean, I rarely play Pokemon not on stream or not for YouTube videos or like recording for YouTube videos, so or PDCGO, I guess. But yeah, I can't, I can't think, I don't. It's basically the same thing, except I'm not talking. <clears throat> that's fair. That's fair. I, I also haven't played much. I'm usually like curled up in a snuggie, which is like a pretty big difference <laughs> between being on stream. So I wasn't sure if there's was other something going on. Flip. Well, yeah, I like I literally never play PTC Joe if it's not to record something <clears throat> or on stream. So like I'm never like I play so much PTC Joe that I just like not playing Pokemon is not a way like I chill out or like relax. Like for me, it's not like oh I'm just gonna chill. Hang out on the couch uh, and play some PTC on my iPad or whatever. Like, I just like that would never, Pokemon is just never my go to. Cause it's like, and I enjoy doing it for when I am doing it, but it's not like my go to thing to, um, you know, white people blanket with or something. <laughs> <laughs> you never get on and, and test a deck. Like, uh, I know Sackett was on last night testing some garbage. Uh, no, I just make a note of it and then do it, <laughs> play it on stream tomorrow. Like, if, I, if there's a deck I want to play, I just like make a note of it and I'll play it on stream tomorrow. So, why why didn't you practice more for this tournament like i mean that sounds kind of stupid because you play on stream for like 30 hours a day or 30 hours a week at least <laughs> if not more but like 
did it ever cross your mind of like, I should, I should try hard. There's a lot of money on the line. Or was it just like, man, I'm sure I'll be fine. I mean, I didn't. So I think the tournament is definitely up to a higher standard than the average online tournament for sure. Right. And I would even like classify this. Like, I mean, if we want to get like categorical with it, it's basically a regional championships. I don't know if I want to say it's harder or not, because once again, like concentrated talent pool is still pretty high for like Europe or North America. And obviously there's a lot of great players who are in, in both regions who aren't playing right now or Australia, like Henry Brand doesn't even play right now. One of the best players in the world. Um, same thing for Latin America, I'm sure. So I don't know, maybe it's like similar to like a regional level as far as talent pool goes, but obviously just adding like any player like Tord or uh, Jeremy Lim into the mix is going to be like a big game changer. Right. So, um, so I don't think it's like, it's definitely not as hard as worlds. Uh, I'd say probably about a regional. I think ICs are probably going to be a little bit more stacked as far as talent goes as well. Um, especially with like the travel awards, which is great that Pokemon does. So they bring all the top players from all the regions into the same spot. And then you have those extra top players, you know, from that region who can't just like go out and travel to all the ones there as well. So I would say it's, you know, it's like around a regionalized talent event. And for regionals, I don't test that much. Like I don't overly test. Like, so I, I kind of thought about it in terms of like that same t level of an event. I don't really test any extra for regionals um is that superstitious just like, or no i just i don't have the time most of the time all right i also don't like because i once again i play so much pdcgo through um coaching pdcg or youtube videos <laughs> streaming i just don't really have the time or it's not something i overly want to do there's been times in the past where i'll test a little bit more but like i'm beginning of this year i'm trying to get a tournament site like for the uh for atlantic city all all the games i played with mewtwo were at league cups and on stream like i didn't sit down and grind games against a matchup with one of my testing partners or anything like that. <clears throat> Maybe if I would have, they wouldn't have played Picaram at the event, but you know, that's on them. Um, <laughs> and same thing, going into Knoxville, I was like, let's cut a Poke Gear for an Acro bike. And that was it. That's the only change I made, I think, from the list. I know we put the Marsh Shadow in, I guess, as well. And I was like, all right, that's enough. Um, yeah, I like, and even before that, the year before that, uh, I mean, we did, I did more testing once you get to the event, but like leading up to the event, those like regional events, I didn't really, there was no testing. We would always talk, like me and my group would always talk. Some of them put a little bit more time in as like far as physical testing goes. Um, I would put, I would do it sometimes, but like, I was just always constantly so burnt out on Pokemon. It was like, not something I could like physically get myself to do to, and like be productive about it as well. So at, once we got to the event, there was a little bit more energy, uh, like pre jitter pre tournament adrenaline and so on so and then adrenaline once you got into the tournament start playing games so like leading up to the event like once you get to the hotel room with your group or whatever um we're gonna meet up with your group you know do some testing then but even then we didn't ever really play that much um for like regionals and i thought about the same way with this like i was talking like basically me talking to fouché felt like i was at a regionals we we're all sitting on our beds and we're all sitting on our beds in the hotel room or on the floor or on a chair and we we're all just talking um about what do we want to play what do we want to tech what do we expect that's basically what me and Fouché did was like how I usually prepare for regional championships is just sitting there talking to a person or a group and being like, uh, all right, what do we expect? What do we want to play? What do we tech into it? What do we want this for? What do we want that for? Why are we playing this? Why are we playing that? And that's basically how I usually prepare for, for big tournaments. So I didn't feel like I needed anything more for, for the players cup. Obviously like worlds and ICs, it goes a little bit further, but like, I like felt like the players cup, I don't know. I just kind of felt like it was a regionals to me. Um, as far as like my, like as much as I wanted to put into it. So <clears throat> like I season worlds definitely go, I definitely go a little bit extra on those, but it just, it felt like a regional level event to me. So I was like, I'm going to like, that's, I just kind of like defaulted into that mode, I guess. So is this why we don't get a bed cam? <laughs> <laughs> no, that makes sense. Like that's one of those things. I've never had that luxury. So it's kind of like, it's interesting to hear because I like, I communicate with my testing partners before, but they're, they're excessively creative. It's like, Hey, why don't we play two fairy energies in Malamar? And it's like, I'm not wasting my brain cells on this. I'm going to go grind games. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's really cool to hear that. And it's like, Oh, I clearly, I'm just not good enough at this game, which is fair, <laughs> but it must be kind of crazy to just be like, I don't know. It's, it's crazy to me that level difference between like, yeah, I'm just going to talk about the matchups and I'm sure I'm going to be totally fine. Versus me, who's like, I got to play this thing like 50, 60, 70 games with this deck to maybe be competent enough to day two a regional with it. I mean, I think that's part of the skill that, that Azul just has, uh, understanding the game. We've seen him pick up so many decks, the, the Whimsicott deck, just here's what we need to do, figure it out. Uh, Sinchino Cin would be better in here than Greedent. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like little little twist to the, to the thing that just I've played the game. I know how the the ebb and flow of it is. 
um, just little little things like that make him a better player. And also, I believe that you offer coaching as well, right? As well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Where can the people find out about that? At uh, metify.gg slash at Azul GG. Check, check out that letter. <laughs> M E T A F Y <laughs> dot GG slash at. I don't know why there's the at there, but they have the slash at Azul GG. Hmm. Yeah, which for anyone listening, uh, I did make a video. I got coaching when I first started, and it made me go from like, I completely skipped the newbie stage and just went to being like a good player almost immediately because of it. I have a YouTube video on like why I think coaching is so good. So you should check that out too if you're unsure about why you would pay someone because <laughs> you, you skip being bad completely and you just go from like, oh, wow, I'm going two, three at League Cups to like you just top cut all of them like immediately. It's really nice. I mean, maybe not like all of them, but you get the idea. And I felt like that's been the way I've always kind of played the game in general, like not even just for regionals, but how I play Pokemon. Like I, I will either play a deck. The first season I, I became a master, all I did was play one deck the whole the whole year, and then I won the regionals that year. And you can only go to one regionals back the year. And then when I won with Yvatal Garb, just before, like I didn't test matchups, but I went to league, uh, like league cups and stuff. And then I always like theorized a lot. And then before that, Florida regionals where I played Yvatal Garb, I had just been that's the deck I was playing. So I was like, I'm just gonna keep playing it. And then um, I played it, and then you know I won that event, right? And I was like, I'm just gonna keep playing it. I think it's a really good deck. I really enjoy it. That's how I've like felt with like when I won Atlantic City. I was like, Mewtwo's just a really good deck. I enjoy it. I don't think I can lose to anything besides bad decks like Guardian. So it's kind of like that same thing where it's like, I'm not teching for Guardian because that deck is terrible. And if it if it gets, if I lose to one day one, I can still make day two, right? So that's that's kind of always been my mentality for decks like that. Um, I'm not trying to beat decks that won't win the tournament because what's the point? <laughs> like they can't, like if I just beat everything else, I will still win the tournament. Um, and then like I had, like when I got, when I won Lorantis, when I won Toronto Regional with Lorantis, I had never played a game with the deck before. Then I, and then, but I was like, this just seems like a really good deck. It's a really good play. I talked to Fouché actually about it because he had played it the week before in Collinsville. I talked to my, uh, my friend Eric, um, who had, uh, was going to play it as well. And I was like, uh, the muscle band seemed bad. I'm going to cut, like, I just looked up Ross's, uh, list, I think, uh, that he played, uh, or that him and Fouché played. Um, and I was like, cut the muscle band. So I don't seem, that'll make a whole ton of sense to me. Uh, the deck seems really good. I'm just going to play it. Never played a game with it before. And then I won that tournament. So it's either like, I either have a deck that I like and I know it's good, so I play it, or it's like, um, I'm going to try and hard counter the meta, but maybe I haven't played the deck a whole ton <laughs> before. But it just like works out like when you when you just know the deck is that good, it's probably better to play that. Like for me, I know it's better to play that than for me to play. I don't even know what deck I was playing at that time. It was an expanded event, so I probably wasn't playing anything because I don't like expanded. Um, I probably would <laughs> have went like... you never liked expanded? That was like three years ago, right? I was a little while ago. I mean, I, it was just wasn't like no one, no one played expanded because expanded <laughs> was really similar to like standard back then. I feel like more. Um, I actually maybe would have played. What would I have played if I didn't play Lorantis? Oh, I would have played Turbo Dark because I actually like tweeted out and then Philip Schultz responded. Play Turbo Dark. You get all the good cards and expanded. And he sent me a list uh, <laughs> of Turbo Dark. And because um, I tweeted out like the night before, I was like, I don't know what to play. Which I play. I just like tweeted out what should I play for the tournament tomorrow. And Philip Schultz was like, Play Turbo Dark. You get all the broken cards and expanded. You get to play it at max like max power and expanded. Because um, that's back when people were doing like the pseudo Wudo, like 16 dark energy build, or the, the yeah, it was like the only Pokemon it was like a pseudo Wudo, four dark rye, four Yvatal with the stadium, and there was like 16 dark energy or whatever. And he's like, You have to play all the broken cards, you should play Turbo Dark. And I almost played that. And if I hadn't played Lorantis, but I was like, Lorantis just you just item lock, right? And you just win. <laughs> like, I'm gonna play Lorantis. Um, but yeah, that's basically how I've always played. Like, I've never really tested like that much um, for worlds. And I think if we're worlds and ICs, it's a little bit different for sure. Um, now. But like even like way back then, I would always just play Pokemon. If I liked the deck, I'd play that. If I think there was if I could come up with a deck or I just knew there was a deck that kind of countered the meta currently, I would just play it. And it doesn't matter how much like testing I had put in with it or not. I just like knew, especially when I like knew it was that it was so good. Like it was like my inexperience with the deck will be uh taken over initially by just like the power of the deck against the matchups that I know I think I'm gonna hit. And then by the time I'm, you know, six, seven rounds into the tournament, I'll have enough experience with the deck where I should be able to play it almost optimally. So yeah, that's usually how, that's pretty much how I've always kind of played Pokemon or played the game. I've never like really sat there and grinded matchups with like a deck that I really want to play. So I'm not sure if I'm doing it wrong then. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe I need to think more. <laughs> I just took down, I have a bunch of notes now. Like, uh, yeah, I'm not doing it right. Right. Like, I, I listen back to every podcast to make sure that the audio is fine, but now I'm going to actually listen to this one. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think that's probably why I've been focusing on Sword and Shield on. It's like, all right, this will be the first real format that I've been a part of. And so I can like know the game and know the meta and just know every deck and pick it up and kind of have some feel to it. But um, you've been you've been playing forever as well. And then you've been streaming, what, six, seven years? I don't even remember when I started. Streaming. It's been a while, though, for sure. Yeah. Because yeah. someone just right, had I, a three year subversary, right? Yeah, Chip, yeah, I think. Though. Uh, Hall Saul's got like forty something months. Yeah, Chip Chip hit his forty the other day. Forty months I of got, rat. I got dinged for ten bucks today. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, the tier two. Let's go. Yeah, I, I think you you two are my tier two boys. <laughs> All right, choice. I have I have a question. Um, what what were your thoughts on the delayed recording process with PC three? Um, and it's obviously been with the first two as well. And then, like, how you're playing the decks that are technically outdated now that we see them released, and you have to sit on that information. What's your just thought on that whole process? Um, I mean, I think these last two, it wasn't as bad as PC1, but PC1 was like, bro, all your decks suck, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I remember looking at the Eternatus list, I was like, bro, what are you doing, bro? Come on. Um, but PC2 and 3, it wasn't like that, like, that far off as much i mean obviously like the development with peek with the hoods and stuff um but like besides that it's not too far off like of what we're currently playing with i don't think um of course it's, it would be way better if it was live especially i think the biggest deck that would have been cool to see live would be the towards Cincino deck right because it's like um you know a couple weeks ago nico and pedro was like this deck exists and people are like hmm <laughs> <laughs> it's a little like, suspicious. oh it does you say <laughs> And so, you know, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this deck is all of a sudden a thing, right? right. So it's like... Pedro streams it um, every so, day, I wonder. <laughs> yeah, and so it would have been really cool if um, if it was live, right? Especially for that, like, that was, like, the cool, the coolest deck to come out of the, like, the most, you know... Uh, it should have been cool if it was live, for sure. And it would definitely be cool if they do it in the future, who knows? Um, but yeah, there definitely is, like... I feel like that for the last two, the meta hasn't been too different. Especially the one before, because the meta was so bad. Like, well, what was the, what was the set that came out for that one? It was... Uh, what was our last set? Not this set, but the last Vivid Voltage. Vivid Voltage. Yeah, Vivid the Voltage. Did like, what, what did Vivid Voltage did, do? Did, nothing, right? Gave us Essential, sword. Yeah. No, that didn't even give us sword. That was Champion's Path. Yeah, it <laughs> didn't give us anything. But like that that one, like for, for that was the one that Zach won, right? PC2, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. that one, the meta, like that was like a fine one. And um, like the meta didn't change too much the, like between when they recorded it and when it went live, right? Uh, and this one wasn't too bad either, but there was definitely, definitely like some disconnect. And it would have been really, it would have been like cool to have seen specifically towards the deck be played live i'm sure for a lot of people it would have been a lot more hype around it um and then the picarom games want to have felt as bad because people didn't know about the hood technology and all that stuff so um definitely would be better if it was live i i kind of understand why they do it the way they do it um it's really hard to do live the quality of someone recording their game and then sharing it through discord is a big drop off there right and they're trying to bring out a product it'd be cool if they were like yo pay a bunch of these guys over time to have it done sooner um that would be cool of course right um so i don't know we'll see what they come up with the next one i'm sure they're always trying to improve it i mean they changed they did best of five this time around so they're always trying to make improvements yeah, you had to play a lot there <laughs> yeah <laughs> especially knowing it was pretty much uh like mercy mercy kill <laughs> <laughs> yeah it got really grindy at at one point i got i was pretty tired by the end of it like, i definitely like well like the first game of it i was pretty like I felt I was like pretty tired after I beat uh Tor. Like that's where I was like most mentally drained. Um I played poorly in the first two rounds. Oh, I don't know if I, I don't know how bad I played against Spiritomb. I played bad against the Victini for sure. And then against Spiritomb, I think I probably played fine. I picked it up against the ADPs. I played like I feel like almost perfect against the Mewtwo Charizard deck, but that deck is pretty easy to beat. Um to be honest. And it's the nice ADPs not. I feel like I played yeah, I played against the Mewtwo decks or the ADPs, I feel like I played really well. But like I almost feel like I played better when I played against ADP. And I feel like that might have been part of it for me is like I was kind of playing to the deck slash player I was against. So when I go up against Tord, I'm gonna try that a little bit harder, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Um, which is not you don't want to have that mentality. You want to play at maximum at all points. And you know, that's why Tord two out all of his opponents in the lower bracket. Although I've had to play against NAP ADP and I don't think he did. So I don't know if it's hundred percent fair. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> that's um, rigged. Yeah, so, um, but it was, it's always cool to beat ADP. I was, I mean, I enjoy beating ADP when I do beat it, but if I'm gonna lose to it, I don't want to play against it. So, um, but yeah, I feel like the Victini game I played really bad against, and then the, the, I picked it up against the, the lower bracket stuff. And then when I, once I beat Tord, I was like pretty mentally drained at that point. I remember being pretty tired 
Um, <clears throat> but and then yeah, I just like <laughs> in the first game, I just completely whiffed. I had lethal for like two turns in a row. <laughs> I was so focused on KOing the thing with strafe. I wanted to KO with strafe. I was like, all right, it's a good okay strafe meme right here. Uh, <laughs> and then I whiffed the net for the goon. I was like, all right, I'll just strafe it then. Uh, but I got to win the whole the whole tournament with strafe, which was nice. But um But yeah, then I would but then, then it got really draining. I was like over and over Pikaram, they lose. Pikaram, I win, Pikaram, I win. I was like over and over and over and over. I was like, got punches Pikaram, punches Mewtwo, go through the motions. So it got a little a pretty draining towards the end there. So you uh did you record every match? Uh, yeah. So the Azul cut does exist. <laughs> yes. So as as ha- I didn't, I didn't it. I hashtag it release the Azul cut. I believe <laughs> <laughs> it should, it should be trending because we got a uh, part of the best part of this was that you got to commentate your own games when they were happening. Yeah. And the other ones. Uh, and I think that's I think people really enjoy the VOD reviews. So. Um, oh, I love the VOD reviews. The VOD reviews, you teaching yourself. <laughs> like, what was I thinking? Here's what I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's always hard to go back and, like, especially because it was, like, a decent while ago. It's, like, hard to go back and be like, okay, what was I exactly thinking in this scenario and why did I make that play? Like, I made a weird play in one of the finals games where I went, I could have hit the Mewtwo with Gale Thrust and then rap, boss Pikaram and gone rapid flow, KO Pikaram, KO Mewtwo. But instead, I rapid flowed first. But I remember I had a reason for why I rapid flowed. I remember thinking, I remember being in the moment and choosing, knowing I could Gale Thrust it for 150 and then go for the six prizes on the next turn. But I had a reason for why, I remember having a reason for why I rapid thrust or Gale Thrust or didn't Gale Thrust the Mewtwo and went with the GMAX rapid flow for the 120, 120. And it ended up working out. Um, but I know I had a reason in the moment for why I did not want to do the Gale Thrust into the Mewtwo there. But I forget what it was. Um, and I don't know if it was correct or not, if I could even come back to why I had that reason, but I remember having a reason. Yeah, someone in chat said probably hammers. Could have been hammers, yeah, could have been hammers. But I had the I had the karate belt set up too, so it was like I could have attacked with the other Urshifu with the basic fighting on it and just gone, all right, punch for 150. Um, or I could have even attach like the the rap strike energy to the bench one with the with the basic fighting and evolve the other one with the karate belt and just hit with just karate belt, leave my energies on the bench one. I was like, there are a lot of ways to play, but I remember being like, all right, I actually want to GMAX Rapid Flow here, but I cannot remember why I wanted to GMAX Rapid Flow there. So maybe it was just a bad reason. Do you we have all, a... We all... <laughs> Go no, I was, was going to say, say, we all make mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> so it might have just been a mistake. Wait, you all make mistakes? <laughs> or I've never Some misplayed more once. Than others. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, do you have this, any more questions, picture. Grant, before we get to the viewer questions? Um, oh yeah, I can. have one. I have one for both of you, and this is an interesting little topic. Um, Azul, you've recently gone uh, to the expression thumbnails in your YouTube, and <laughs> Mello, you have not. <laughs> uh, thoughts on the change? Is it just a breath of fresh air? And Mello, why haven't you gone to the ever so popular clickbait grabbing expression thumbnail? Bro, they're so cringy. <laughs> they are <laughs> even if they work i don't bro i don't i don't need the clout and or money that bad I, it's not <laughs> worth it respect the hustle azul but. i mean it's kind of like a funny a funny trend I, I don't know if they work either that's why i'm trying them out but like it is like it's clickbait and um you know getting people to click on your video is like part of my job so yeah. <laughs> getting people to watch my stuff so like you know even if it is a little clickbaity like if it makes that big of a difference to help me grow become that much bigger of a, a content creator and a streamer and a YouTuber and all that stuff, it's worth it for sure. But like, I'm not like committed to them or anything. I actually really like Mellow's too. Mellow has like the layout or the, the overlay thing, like the yeah, shout out to template, the template. That one. Yeah. I assumed it was doom. Yeah. yeah. It's like, the, like, and I've always actually thought about like having someone do a template for me. So maybe I'll hit up doom to do a template for me after I get through the uh, face expression phase. We'll see. I mean, it could stick. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> it might <laughs> we'll just see. be the play. Like I learned one of my students was like, you need red arrows. Like that's stupid. And I added red <laughs> arrows and my impression click through rate's gone up one and a half percent. It's so hey, stupid. Add some more arrows. Maybe you just don't have enough arrows out there. <laughs> that could be if we just yeah, you're not wrong. Her arrow. <laughs> All right. I got I got two more quick things. One, uh Mello, you were able to change your name on PTCGO. Azul, you still have the dashes. <laughs> yeah. Have you reached out and tried to change yeah they said no basically it's like they it's like if there's personal information in your name you can't uh oh you can change it 
but it would still have personal information is basically the thing so you could change it to not azul gg yeah. essentially so yeah but it doesn't make any sense <laughs> you have a suggestion boo no i was gonna say so they they wanted you to get rid of your mariners fan because <laughs> they, <suck. laughs> they they did they were like this is <laughs> we can't have this happen <laughs> they're so and bad then, uh the prize tracker app uh dylan's are wanted to shout out for that i think he's done a decent job with that uh he yeah. says use the website version not the download but he will put in a bigger download button oh oh <laughs> <laughs> but whenever you go to github there's no <laughs> download button and then you have to like find the thing and they have to figure out which one you're supposed to download there's like six or ten different things in the yeah. section there well, uh, should i do the installer should i do the one where i have to manually do it I just downloaded an update for one of my OBS things. I did the installer. First, I had to find it on GitHub, do the installer, and then now apparently I didn't. It didn't download correctly. <laughs> it, like I don't know. It'd be nice if there's like a big download button. You just click it, and then it downloads, like like every other site, or like downloads the version they think you should have, and then you could scroll down and go to the other version because they have like all the other versions in the GitHub, so you can like go deeper into the github realm or whatever but yeah, yeah. Even if there's like a just a download button to get like the one that because like, they always have one they suggest that you download anyways like yo you should probably download the installer if you don't know what you're doing um so they should just the download button should just download that one he's been trying yeah i know i think he said go to his website maybe um because of that whole thing he's always telling us test this version uh but there's like a beta and the two point like i don't even know and for anyone I, listening I, I, I like it on youtube it will be in the description i will link Dillinger's, uh website and for anyone listening on spotify or etc it should be in the show notes not 100 percent sure if i'm doing that correctly but in theory it'll be there because look the prize tracker just won pc3 it's it's clearly <laughs> broken it, yeah. <laughs> shout out shout out dillinger uh and then the last one is our event saturday deck wizard tournament uh invite uh i think half the people have been announced all three of us will be on there i'm part of team all night party with gens and slapjacks <laughs> uh <laughs> we won the kdr invite or uh qualifier and then we've announced a few you can check out the twitter to see them and we'll be announcing the rest there's some big names in there they're mainly all streamers it'll all be streamed uh should be exciting and then check out our sword and shield on series we've had two qualifiers uh third and fourth will coincide with the next set and pre-rotation and then an invite and probably be cash prizing uh, interesting thing about the deck wizard thing this weekend's cash prizing <laughs> uh, but there, everything's always free to enter that we do so um check us out for cash That's prizing it. for a deck wizard <laughs> it's so good streamer, stream, streamers making a living man i mean you're not wrong you're not wrong <laughs> all right so we got some questions from chat we're we're not going to get to all of them but as always we're live on twitch.tv slash mellow underscore magikarp you can come find us here also uh if you do have questions you can't catch us live feel free to leave them in the youtube comment section or in an itunes review and once i learn how to read the itunes reviews we will uh, answer the question <laughs> in a future episode but we'll do as many as we can we'll do as many because there, there's a heck and lot of them I think, do the people not realize they can ask you these questions every day on your stream? Yeah, a lot of them look, <laughs> a lot of them look familiar. All right, uh, this one, the first one's a meme, but it has to be asked because Azul, you say a lot of things that I'm just like, what is this man saying? Mister Soda King asks, "Is relish a salad?" <laughs> no. <laughs> Put it in. I potato salad. <laughs> I like that you've come around to at least acknowledging the name relish. I know you're. <laughs> Well, I, I don't a little mean bit the rough, but the hot dog condiment, yeah, relish. Right. I don't even like pickles, <laughs> and I call it the deck relish. <laughs> All pickles, then, bro. Yeah. All right. Uh, there's a lot of meme ones, so I'm skipping a lot of them. There's another meme one, but not a bad one. Slapjacks13 asks, "What is the optimal breakfast?" I mean, like, uh, what is it? What is the? I forget that it was like sausage, beans, tomatoes. What is that one called? Uh, bro, an English breakfast. English breakfast, bro. That's that's, a, that's that kind of stuff's pretty good. No. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I don't have it very often. Like, I had French toast earlier, so Ooh. that's always good. But like English breakfast, like that's cause I, like for me because that's something I don't have very often. English breakfast, something like that. Yeah, I think a full spread's the best option. You know, give you something of everything. 
Uh, yeah. bis biscuits, gravy, eggs, bacon, sausage, all that. Every morning, cup of Every cottage morning. cheese, <laughs> scoop of protein powder, <laughs> the scoop yeah, of I've powdered been, peanut butter. <laughs> I've been doing uh, yogurt and granola for breakfast. Well, see, daily breakfast, pretty good. Once, yeah, see, y'all can't insult it. Once we get back to regionals, you're like, yo, mellow kind of jacked. That's that's <laughs> why. I mean, yeah, my breakfast has been consisting of the protein shake, but um, yeah, like if I had to like pick a best breakfast, definitely be English. Roy John asks, favorite Brazilian food or food you got from traveling to a tournament. I'll start. I have like a. Oh, go ahead. Okay, I was gonna say I've never had Brazilian food, but favorite from I need to eat. Bro, I've heard Brazilian food's literally just meat on meat. Yeah, on it, meat. it is. It, it is. sounds it is. so it's good. Just, it's just it's just meat and rice. Like those are amazing. So, I don't know what a Brazilian food is. Uh, anyway, for me, going to Dallas, getting barbecue was. I I, I want to go back to Dallas. I don't even care about the Pokemon, man. <laughs> it was like I missed day two. I felt kind of bad because my first day two miss of the season. And then we got the barbecue, and I'm like, no, nah, we good. <laughs> like, this is fine. <laughs> Did you go to 8-Ball? Is that what it's called? 8-something? Oh, shoot. Go I have no one? idea. I'd have to look back in my uh, messages to find out where we went. But it was good. It was not close to the venue. We definitely had to Uber there. That was probably the one then. I mean, that's the one that everyone talks about. That's the one I've been to a couple times. The one where it's like, you walk in, and it's just like immediately you see the smokers cooking. And it's yeah, just yeah, like there's one smoker on each side, and yep. you walk around. Okay, yeah, yep, that was the one then. It was good. Yeah. Or what about y'all? I mean, that I might can't... have to be the be the same for me. Brazil, the Brazilian food, like I don't like when I went to the couple times I've been to Brazil. It's just, I mean, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of meat, which is not a bad thing. Meat's pretty good, uh, but there's like I don't know if I've like I can't think of like a I probably had a couple things that are like Brazilian foods, but I couldn't name them. So if I had to pick, like, just I mean, it might be like the same the same one for me. Like this barbecue, I'm a big fan of barbecue food. It's just really good, because um, there's a lot of meat. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I can't think of, like, any other food that I've had, like, regionally. Oh, the, we, I guess I did get, what I tried? It was emu. In Australia, I tried emu and crocodile, I think, burgers. <laughs> Those were pretty good. So that was pretty good. They were also meat. <laughs> <laughs> Moral of the story. Yeah, I can't wait to start traveling. Um, I got in a little too late to the game for the travel stuff, but. Uh, looking forward to it, and and I know I like to meme to go to Outback first when we take the team out to Outback, but <laughs> but I, I, I'm guessing we'll go somewhere nicer for that. I mean, Outback ain't bad. It depends on the city. I feel like some cities Outback is actually like you know this is acceptable. <laughs> like it's totally a fine place. <laughs> it's consistent. Smoke one tonight asks: Is Cole two a good PC four deck? This is I mean, it kind of goes along though. the lines of like everything I've said. It's like it's not bad. It's not the be one of the best. I mean, it might be better in the like. It definitely is a little bit meta dependent because like a turn just is pretty bad. Um, random stuff with crushing hammer can always kind of get you, but like it's, it's a good deck overall. Like I said, like with the orb beetle, like it's just a good deck. You can just like playing it's just not bad. Um, it's not the best deck, but it's just like a solid deck. It's got solid matchups. No reason not you, to play it. To be honest, if you like it, if you've played with it. Yeah, might be, but if you're just picking it up and using oh, a yeah. key on it, don't waste your time. Yeah, it's a pretty but hard. I, it's one of the harder <laughs> decks to play for sure. Do it when I'm in the pod. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, bro. You'll probably be playing, playing ADP. Anyone can go horror house poltergeist, bro. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah, that deck be bodies ADP. <laughs> yeah, that's ADP pretty good relish. <laughs> Got to mix them up, ADP and relish, bro. <laughs> Don't don't tempt him. You have to work. You have to evolve your Rillaboom while Mewtwo uses ADP's GX attack. <laughs> and excel could, some grass. Me and me and Sack have a collab tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Come up with something really stupid. Stellar Wish has a cool question. It's it might be too long of a full answer, but we'll also see. What do you think of the prize card mechanic? Is it good? Is it bad? And why or why not? So the idea of for listeners who may not understand, like instead of prize cards, maybe have like six tokens you take so that you don't actually prize cards every game. So you can't prize your tech card or something like that every game. I mean, I think it's fine. It's like it's weird. 
and it's, it's it's definitely like uh coming from like other card games i think people would would like dislike that or like people who have only played pokemon would also like dislike it when they kind of like know other card games don't do that but like i don't know i, I drafted magic recently like or the other day uh, with a bunch of friends and you don't draw cards in magic like you're living <laughs> off the top deck like every turn is like prize card rng you're it like what's so it gonna bad. be <laughs> it's a land it's another land like um so like i don't know like when you compare like just like because the, the i guess like always the game to compare it to is like magic like any game right because like that is the game and magic is a ton of fun i love playing magic but um but like it's like like that is that's hard rng it's just your top decks are so important in like magic and pokemon we have the rng of prizes i think at the very least you should be able to look at your prize cards before you put them down because anyone can figure it out anyways so, like, you should be able to look at them. And if they did something different, I wouldn't hate it. But I don't think it's as bad as people, like, make it out to be. Like, I've seen some people discussing it recently where it's like, uh, you can never fully, like, play the game because of your prize cards. Or I hate, like, but there's always people complaining about something, right, that just is, like, unreasonable to complain about or they're just wrong. Um, so that's always happening. But, like, it's not definitely never, not as bad as the prize card haters think it is. Um, but I think you should at the very least be able to just, like, look at them. Like, we can all figure out our prize cards. Can we just, like, look at the six things that are prized and just put them back down and then play the game so we don't waste? Like, my biggest thing is, like, when two really good players play against each other or two players of any skill level, when we go to check our prize cards, we waste time, right? Like, yes. if we're, if there's two people who are going out of the way, I, I, so I said really good players initially because, like, those, like, the high, a higher level player are, the more likely you're going to go check your prize cards. But uh, players of any skill level, if you go to check your prize cards, if you both go check your prize cards, you're taking that much extra time out of the game, right? To go find your prize cards which is fine and you should do it, but it also wastes time and we all want to complete three games. Like if we're talking about like regional level events, we all want to complete three games in 50 minutes, right? Or want to have the ability to be able to do that. So it's like, let us like draw our six, look at them, shuffle them, offer for our opponent to cut and then lay them out, right? Yeah, for anyone who's ever watched a regional stream, you will 100% hear the casters every single round say, and this is their first deck search. So they're going to spend a little more time to figure out their prize yeah. cards. <laughs> Cause it's always like oh they're slow playing they're taking too long and it's like oh i'm, I'm trying to figure out what i need and what's not there yeah well that uh, that rng from the prize cards makes you naturally want to play a tord type build right super consistent yeah. four of two ofs guzzlord and 59 not, energies and not, baby and not tech and i think that kind of stifles creativity uh especially right now we don't have any interaction but i mean azul you were dominant with um zation turbo zation uh with the Mr. Mime and Jirachi yeah. Prism. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of like next level play you can do to get when prize cards get involved where like uh and you you and you and your opponent can apply it, but if you're only applying it and your opponent isn't like that's an advantage, right? If you're playing off your prize cards, like I have four supporters prize, so when I draw three prize cards, I'm guaranteed a supporter so I can like go down to zero card hand, right? Like stuff like that. Um you should try and take advantage of um and it's fine, but it's also like fine uh it just makes it easier to be able to do that. <clears throat> It's like a skill in itself. So like if we removed prize cards, you'd remove that certain skill from the game, right? Um, but then there would be also the added skill of uh, I constantly have access to what I need to, to to execute my strategies now because nothing is prized. So then my deck can always like gain the advantages it should be able to gain. So then there's that skill added there. So maybe it just ends up being neutral as far as is there actually will the better player win more often if the or the pe person who plays more correctly in that game win more often if there is or isn't prize cards right now it's not always better player but just the person who plays more optimally throughout the game um will they win more often whether there is prize cards in the game or isn't prize cards in the game because there's like two different sets of skills that get applied whether there is or isn't um, i think at the very least we should just know what they are when we before we put them down it just like make things a little bit easier a little bit faster that is a like a town map and then you get a then you <laughs> shuffle them and put them back down you, uh, <laughs> you rearrange them at least as like so a card know in there or just like a gx counter oh you mean uh, you just get to, you just get to yeah, do that i want to you can look yeah. at your opponents too <laughs> sure. yeah both, both of you do it you know i don't know idea I be terrible. no but that is an I interesting also, point the idea because like playing off of your prize cards and the idea you could so you know sometimes you play down your hand because like i don't care i'm gonna draw three prize cards plus a top deck yeah. it's a four card hand i'm totally fine yeah. and if you remove prize cards you that becomes just a new skill you have to have of like, is it worth mortgaging my hand in order to take three prize tokens instead of, you know, getting to draw three cards, especially, you know, I've got two welders prized. This is just an advantage for me, but now it's not. Yeah. And that's actually like another thing is like just having car, like card advantage isn't as a big of a deal in Pokemon, but it is when you're like, you know, going to a pretty low hand size and you're taking a knockout. If you're not drawing prize cards, you just have a very low hand size, right? Like you just have two cards, a two card hand. You're like, well, 
see what I can do with this next turn. But if you draw those three prize cards, I mean, obviously, always in your top deck. But yeah, if you get the three prize cards involved, that's like a, that much more. And people play around that. I don't think people realize how much they play around that. But it's just like, oh, I know I'm going to have these extra cards to work with. But they don't think about that in that way. But it's like, what if you, what if prize cards just aren't there? You don't have those extra cards to play with anymore on the next turn. That's why the new tool, uh, or the recent tool, <laughs> discard your, if your opponent takes a prize, discard it. The billowing smoke or whatever yeah <laughs> under it could be good at control it could be good at control right because like you put it on your extra drill and you're like your yeah. hand locked your top deck is locked your basic can att- your pokemon can attack but you don't get those prize cards <laughs> i wonder if i wonder if sanders i wonder if sanders thought about that should uh add him on twitter you what should yeah. respond to you i know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always helpful so do you all have time to do a few more questions or i don't want to hold you longer than yeah yeah, it's okay. him, not me. I'm here all, all night. <laughs> or the all night party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Professor Polk asks, and specifically for Azul, so thanks for not wanting to know my, <laughs> my opinion. <laughs> hey, I almost top cut a regional that one time. It's close. <laughs> Would you rather play the counter or counter the counters? I mean, it just depends, like, on how good I think it would be. Like, because I've done that. I've gone counter the counters, and I've also just, like, played the counter. Um, counter the counters is usually better, but it's a little bit harder to figure out when and if it's actually correct, because you have to also have them bring the counter, um, and the other stuff is still in the meta as well. So so that that one's a little bit harder to make the call of, the countering the counters. Um, it's way harder to do and harder to pull off successfully. Um, but just playing the counter is usually pretty good as long as you know what the counter uh, or playing the counter, but you being aware of what the other potential counters are to the meta so that way you can deal with those or just make sure you're good for the mirror match usually. But I think we've all shown up to a tournament. Oh, okay. Azul might be too good for this, but <laughs> you show up to a tournament and you're like, I'm countering the BDIF. And then you show up to the top tables at 3-0 and you look around and you're like, everyone also countered it, but their counter takes out me. <laughs> like, oh, shoot. <laughs> That's why I always gotta like think about that as well. Bob or like Ma- back in the day, Go for when it. everyone played Greninja, whenever when any when when Greninja was a deck, I would just play Giratina promo. Like at locals and stuff, when the Greninja players would roll up, I'd be like, "All right, we're putting it in." <laughs> <laughs> you know who the Greninja were? Everyone had the Greninja players in their area too. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> we we had a lot of Greninja. Thankfully, I didn't play when Greninja was in standard, or like I did, but it was like a month. There was like two League Cups I went to. But apparently yeah. everyone at our locals played Greninja. <laughs> there were four people who brought Greninja all the time. It's like, that's... No one played Giratina? I have no idea. Apparently not. <laughs> or they didn't care because they just liked know. frogs that much. Yes, they, liked, they liked getting beat with frogs. Although one of our people was like, he was very convinced. Shout out to Drew if you're listening. I don't know if, if you are. But uh, he's like, no, no, no. You just play Silent Lab and then you auto win. <laughs> Which is, I mean... <laughs> It's helpful. It's good. You can use two water shrugs to KO and then they recover it with stretcher. No, but then they have to replace the stadium and I oh, I don't no. know, man. I'm not I like I love playing <laughs> frogs, but I would have never brought frogs to an event. Yeah. It's it's just a fun meme. Okay. I didn't know what that water energy did the first time I played against oh, it. Oh the splash. Oh the recover yeah, one. I was, I was like, yeah. oh, this actually makes the deck kind of good. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, without it would <laughs> I remember when people weren't playing Splash Energy. Like the first time I built Greninja, I had four Splash and I was like, oh, this deck's really good. And then like you go to went to the first regionals and people are getting body. I was like, why don't they play Splash Energy? <laughs> I remember specifically, like that specifically. Like I built the deck. I was like, you gotta run four of these. It's insane. And then like the first couple of regionals, people just didn't have them in there. I was like, why would you not play this card? <laughs> it's it gets your Pokemon back for you yeah. and it's your your shadow stitch attack. Yeah. <laughs> I think people are scared of enhanced hammers. So I don't even know why. I, oh, you couldn't. You, I mean, you couldn't giant water shoot in it. But yeah, obviously it developed to the point where everyone figured out that yes, you should play for splash energy. <clears throat> so Bob McDougall asks, "What's the best water V Max, and why is it Ice Rider Calrix?" I'm gonna say all the water V Maxes suck <laughs> because they are weak to Zacian or Picarom, <laughs> and that's where that ends. Yeah. That's well, we not just, it's yeah. like the the worst of the bad the the worst of the bad I guess like there's no or the best of the the best of the worst like still not good. PJ Witusik asks, "What are you most hyped for adding Chilling Rain to the meta?" Eh, it'll just bring the whole thing full circle as we go to rotation. I don't I don't know how. I mean, we're just seeing results right now from Japan. 
bro. Path to the Peak. Uh, I'm so freaking excited th- for that. That'll card. be big. That, it, that'll be really big. It gives me Shroud of Punishment vibes, where it's just like some single prize decks will be able to abuse this card, and it's just gonna. It, it will be that annoying stating where you're like, oh, I have to play a path deck or whatever. It's, I don't know. I, I'm a huge fan of those types of decks. Those like control that'll, but aggro decks at the same time. That'll be great. And then the uh, crystal ball too, I think is. That thing's insane. It's really good. It's, it's um, mysterious treasure or uh, what's the other one? Nest ball. It's yeah, it's net it's ball. Netball, netball. Net, netball, yeah. netball. I was so upset when I read that, man. Because I'm like, yeah, Shadow Rider's really good. And then you see that and you're like, why? Why, <laughs> why did it need this? I mean, Shadow Rider Mewtwo sounds insane. I'm excited for that. That sounds crazy. Yo, like you don't Trev. even need, um, yeah, Trev. You have all the, you have all these attacks. You just load up your Mewtwo and you start swinging. Because like Shadow Rider, I, I at first I was like, oh my gosh, this thing's insane. But then I did, like did the math. You need ten energy. What the heck? The one hit KO of Vmax. Like Easy. you're two hit KOing most of the time, which everyone else already does. So yeah, I don't think Shadow Rider's that good on its own. With Mewtwo, it sounds kind of crazy. And come rotation, who knows, right? But with Mewtwo, it sounds pretty absurd. We'll see. Yeah, the, it, the two-hit KO uh, meta is coming back, which is kind of cool. The, the only one that really does it, other than weakness, will be the single strike, which I'm a big fan of. Um, but yeah, everything is going to be two hits, and that's why maybe they printed Cheryl and maybe some different energy acceleration. Uh, yeah. it, looks, it looks pretty promising. I guess as far as path goes, I don't think path is gonna be that good, but I think it'll be what? really good rotation. Well, like oh, you that's have swell, like good ADP, eventually is fine. Yeah, peak's gonna okay, be yeah, like yeah. yeah, peak's gonna be like three eighty three swell. ADP is gonna be like three swell, and then we have the <laughs> ball that literally searches out more shadow. The freaking the orb. Oh yeah, Mar-Shadow and then Mewtwo exists. shadow. Like, I'm just gonna get my Mar shadow <laughs> with this orb. So oh, it'll be good. Fair, it'll be good. They'll, they'll, they'll still be decks with four of it, but like there's we have a lot of tools right now to combat it. But once rotation hits, I think we'll finally have like maybe. A healthy stadium format, which is I can't even remember the last time we had yeah. a good stadium format. I guess it would be like back when we had like I don't know, Brooklyn Parallel Cities was decent, I guess, but we'll see. That, that one felt fine. Like going back and playing it now, it's like none of the fate stadiums felt oppressive, right? I mean, yeah, Parallel good. in theory is oppressive, but it didn't feel that bad because nothing really yeah. wanted a big bench. It was just like yeah. Parallel is just such a well designed card. Being able to get rid of yourself or your opponent's bench just felt good. Very, yeah, pretty powerful and pretty good card. Yeah, it's it's been fun playing these Sword and Shield on because you don't have the swell. It's like, okay, you get to actually play the game, the design, like uh, Training Court or uh, Glimwood or whatever. Uh, yeah. You know, you can actually put it down when you find it. And yeah, I think, I think swell, swell isn't like oppressively powerful, but it's just a poorly designed card. At first, I was super hyped for it when I saw it. I was like, ooh, that's cool. But now that I played with it in the format, like it really kills stadiums. Hmm. Like all you need is one deck to have a really good stadium, which is Hearth, and then another deck plays Swell, that's really good, and then no one else wants to play a stadium card because that one deck plays Swell constantly, which right now is like ADP and Peak. It's like even though it's just the one Swell, no one wants to like put a stadium in their deck. We don't have absurdly powerful stadiums anyways right now, but like, yeah, Swell is like a poorly designed card, I think overall. Yeah. Um, it's like why would I play one or two Rose Tower when you know they're playing yeah. two Swell to counter four Hearth? Like yeah, it's like something else. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not worth. Be happy to see Swell go for sure. Yep. More Shadow, Ooh. I like though. He's a cool guy. This is a really important question because this one came with a tier one sub from uh, Sinichi18. <laughs> Thanks, Pedro. <laughs> but uh, Sinichi18 asks I'd like to ask Azul how he deals to be mentally fresh on streaming and not get anxiety with so many viewers every day. Um, good sleep. Uh, <laughs> <drink> water. <laughs> um taking a break to like i took i just took a pretty long break there where i was just like not i had a pretty long break at the beginning of the year i don't know was it the beginning of the year where i just like wasn't playing pdcgo i was just playing hollow knight and a bunch of other games ori stuff like that those are good streams. um i've been doing the warzone streams recently with uh chip and slusky which has been really fun um so switching it up with the streams to like keep streaming but then like doing something different um, or just not streaming, just don't stream as much or take more break days. Like I don't stream on Tuesdays anymore unless it's like a late night war zone stream. But those streams are like so relaxed and like whatever it's called. Like I don't like it's almost like I'm not streaming. Um so I'm just hanging with the goons. But um taking breaks, just not doing it for a while. I like I had that period of time where I just wasn't playing in any tournaments. I was still like streaming PTCGO, not every single day, and I wasn't playing in any tournaments because I was just like kind of burnt out. Um yeah, just don't overdo it. Just like it's and like 
as far as like trying to keep up with the content, keep up with the grind and keep up with the flow of it all, like you don't actually have to stream that much to like keep up with it. You could do, you could stream like every other day or less and it would be like fine. Like, um, I would say sticking to a schedule is really good, but you can make that schedule around whatever works for you. Um, I guess like as far as like anxieties, like I definitely had more anxiety when I first started streaming. Um, and then I, I would always have like little hits as I hit like new spike. Like when I had 1500 people watching me for the <laughs> limit list, yeah. I looked over, I was like, oh my gosh, like there's like, so those hit me, but like, I, it's just one of those things. And I've always, like, people ask me, how do you like stop anxiety for like when you play in your first tournament or being nervous? It's like, you just kind of have to do it, like, and then do it again, and then do it again, and then do it again. Like, I, I don't know, I'm not like a therapist or like anyone who like has any psychological background or expertise. So I don't like know, you know, what goes on on the average human brain to like get around those kind of mental blocks or mental strain. But like, I know if I know for me, if I just do it again and do it again and do it again, it's easier and I get better at it. So for as far as like, you know, streaming in, in front of every, every, the amount of people that I stream in front of every day, it's just like, it's, I've just gotten used to it at this point. You got to do it. You got to like, you have to be like, you just have to do it. And that's all you got to basically do and do it again. Do you ever think about, because so my wife brought this up. I'm a, I'm an introvert. If I'm around a group of six people, I'm probably not going to say a single word unless we're like pretty close friends. <laughs> and yet I can stream. I mean, my streams will vary <laughs> immensely. It'll be like 22 people. Sometimes it'll be 122 people sometimes, but it's just like, they're not real. Like they're not, not that they're real, not real people to me. Thank you for everyone watching. I know you exist, <laughs> but, uh, but it's like, cause I Twitch can't chat, see Twitch them. Chat is just a bunch of peepos, bro. There's a bunch of peepos. Exactly. <laughs> is that, but <laughs> like, do you think of that? Do you like, there's 500 people watching me in top four right now? Or are you just like, it's just a number and you're like, I know that's a lot, but also I'm playing Pokemon. I guess like the latter for sure. Um, I mean, sometimes it hits me like the other day, like, um throughout the glimwood like my stream crashed as well but i saw like 500 people watching me like pretty much all the time and i was like that's yeah, just pretty cool i just mentioned to him like hey it's pretty cool we've had like 500 people watching the whole time appreciate the support but like it was like a um like a more of a grateful feeling than anything as far as instead of being like oh my goodness there's 500 people uh like you know i don't know and i've been being a little bit like i feel like i've been breaking out of my shell a little bit more as far as just being a little bit more reserved on stream recently like a little bit more of my crazier side, I guess. So <laughs> I was going to see how that keeps going, but <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I've never, like, yeah, I, the latter, I guess definitely. It's just like there's 500 people watching, but we're still playing Pokemon. They're here to watch me play Pokemon. I'm just going to play some Pokemon. We're just chilling playing Pokemon, right? Like I, I public speak maybe two, three times a year, like moderating panels or being a panelist and things like that. Like, my thought process is Bro, I have I forget a, you're an actual like professional. Yeah, I have a real I have a real life. Yeah. Uh, I've got two coming up in the next month. No, it's just the book that hangs out in chat, bro. Right. right. <laughs> Not a troll. I just like memes. Uh, but my, my thought is you, you get a captive audience, right? And you get to tell them your thoughts that you are supposedly the expert on. And you, you know, take advantage of that. What's what's to be nervous about there? they're coming to hear how smart you can be and even if you're wrong it doesn't matter like there's no <laughs> fail there's no fail like especially in this stuff like what happens if you misplay you lose the game maybe you didn't you know you don't die in real life it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, not, the, it's not the end of the world but you have a captive audience and you get to entertain and have fun and do whatever you want uh and i think that's what's the most fun about especially the stream stuff like, i don't really I don't. I get seven people when I stream. But <laughs> <laughs> speaking of, probably stream some Mario Kart tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah. Uh, Lee asks a question specifically for Azul again. So, thank you, Lee, for not caring about me at all. <laughs> or me. Who are you? Yeah. Book. <laughs> Book. <laughs> So, Azul, you play a lot of different decks, ranging from aggressive decks like Buzzwool to various control decks. How do you decide what style of deck to play for a particular regional event? Just whatever I think is best. It's like that simple. It's like whatever deck I think is best for the tournament is what I play. So that's why um, I don't recommend everyone does this, but that's why I will play decks I've played zero games with in a tournament. Because I'm like, oh, that's just what I think is the best play. Or I think it's better than the other options that I see currently like obviously the best play you can only really tell after the tournament and even the deck that won the tournament is not always the best play and sometimes it's actually a bad deck right but it's like literally um like the lorantis deck for toronto i was just like 
I can't come up with a better deck than this. And there could have been a better deck, right? Um, I was like, I can't come up with a better deck. There's a bunch of good decks. The 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 best Queen Flareon deck might have been the best deck. Um, who was running it? I forget who was running it. I forget who played it. Uh, was it Drew? It might have been Drew. I forget. That might have been the best deck in the tournament was Vest Queen Flareon because they had Wob in there as well. Um, so they could beat me because they had the Wob. Um, I actually beat a Vest Queen Flareon with Wob. I got really lucky, <laughs> but it wasn't it wasn't the player I'm thinking of. Um, so if they had beaten me, who knows? Maybe they would have won the whole tournament. So I think Vest Queen Flareon, looking back, that was probably the best play for that tournament. Um, but as far as I could see at the Toronto tournament, when I looked at it and I was like, what are the, what, these are the options. Like, this is what I'm considering. And it came down to Turbo Dark and Laurentis Vileplume. I was like, Laurentis Vileplume just feels like a better deck because. Expanded silly. There's going to be a bunch of new decks here. Like that's when people were playing the Toad Decidueye thing. I think that's what Kenny Britton played uh, in his group. Uh, brought that. So there's, like, there's going to be a bunch of new decks. If I just item lock them, I should win enough games <laughs> to put myself in a good spot, no matter what. So let's go item lock some people. So I played that deck and it and it worked out right. So I was like, what? Yeah, it's just and I but I played zero games with it, right? I played absolutely zero games with Lorantis Vileplume before that tournament. I knew how the deck worked. I knew what the sixty was. Um, so I was like, this is what I think out of my options is the best play. So I just played it. Um, and that's not how I always choose my decks. If I think it's the best play, I just play it. Lucas Simio? Lucas Simao asks, this is a really good one. What, which aspects in common do you see on top players around the world? So what are some things top players have in common as far as like... <laughs> Well, Zul's just kind of said it, you know, knowing knowing all the decks, knowing how to play them, how they play. I think uh, Omnipoke said it today in his prepping for PC4 video. Just know all the archetypes, know what the standard deck plays, right? Like how it yeah. plays and what it wants to do. That's like that's actually it's like a big one. It's like a lot of people just don't know. Like if you just ask them, what does like a general 60 cards look like for baby bounce? People just can't answer that. But you want to be able to answer that question very easily. That should be like baseline information for being competitive in my opinion and there's a lot of things i could say on like competitive and men mentality and like and you will like if you just <laughs> follow like it let's just take the pokemon community but you could look at sports and stuff you just look at what some people tweet out and what top people in their perspective category tweet out like that like that can be a thing right there that's mentality right there like if you just that's that's something too like how you um handle yourself and like um talk about your results and um your um your gameplay or whatever it is like that that is also ment mentality is such a big thing in like not just in life but like i mean obviously when it gets like to something competitive it's a huge thing in that as well um and you can you'll see trends between top people in any specific fields and how they interact with social media uh and stuff like that is like another thing like i'm not going to go into specifics on that one but i'm going to put that out there um if i ever get pushed far enough i might rant about it one day <laughs> <laughs> but that's a mentality is like huge in 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 just aspects like that that's nothing to do with the game but the way you handle yourself as a person and like can definitely will definitely kind of shows like top player top people in areas they all handle themselves similarly like the top people in in uh what's it called handle, handle themselves similarly um so i'll put that out there i guess um and if that's something you want to strive for, you know, look towards that a little bit. Um, but yeah, just knowing the metagame, knowing matchups, uh, there's like so many things to like, <laughs> as far as like in-game trends go, I guess. Um, a lot of it's mentality, I think. Um, but doing like the baseline work, you have to do that first. No, just knowing the decks, like like Busa, just knowing, like if I asked you what, what does generally a 60 cards of a Blacephalon deck look like, you should be able to answer that. You should be able to answer like 55 cards, right? Um, so baseline stuff, just like that's just like baseline like any anyone can like look that stuff up and become familiar with that kind of stuff um but that should be if you don't if you don't know that stuff yet that's the first thing you should do for sure information's power right uh and i know two good content creators that put out youtube videos all the time and show you what different decks look like i can think back to one instance where uh xander won the dc open with his checkmate deck and I read his article about it, and then I faced up against it in locals like the next few days. And I knew what he was trying to do, just because you're, you know, ingesting content and seeing what these things are. Uh, so check out your favorite YouTube and and Twitch personalities. I I could recommend two here on stream <laughs> with me right now. <laughs> Bro, shameless plug for yourself. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't, I'm a deck builder more than the player. I think. <laughs> one I've more. got one. I've got one hit in life. 
I mean, <laughs> relish is a uh, relish is pretty big now. It's taking off and on, bro. Especially the no draw supporters. I Dude. I'm so shocked that's actually working out so well. But like three Marnies in the list. Well, Stefan played four, and I'm like, yeah, mm, that's too many. Maybe, maybe I have been wrong this whole time. Bro, that uh, guy's only four one Marnies. Two. Cringe, bro. Yeah, see. <laughs> Uh, one more thing off of that, too. One thing that I tend to see and something that I took for granted quite a bit was all the top players collaborate. I was too stubborn to collaborate a lot early on. And as I've started to collaborate with people, just, just people in general, it tends to help. So in addition to everything that has been said, doing it alone just puts you at a disadvantage compared to everyone else. Like four brains are better than one, even if three of those brains aren't actually that good. Sometimes sometimes people make relish and it turned out that was pretty good <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's definitely a big one as well yeah just i mean having a, a testing group of people that like constantly throw uh throw ideas off and especially becoming familiar with those people like you can you know work with these people today and these people tomorrow but becoming familiar with those people consistently uh is pretty good and i i think and i always like kind of reference this like it really depends on how seriously you want to take the game in general because you don't have to take the game super seriously but um especially getting together with a group of like-minded people who like are want to win right at that like and that's what your goal should just be is to win as opposed to like anything else it should just be to win um if so you come into a group with like-minded people that's just that much better right those are the, like if that's your goal you want to find those people out there who also have the same goal and then collaborate with those people specifically you don't have to like you know completely ditch and exile your other friends who just like kind of play more casually but like you know go work with your try hard group um for sure and play with them um and like go through those motions and then another thing is don't be stubborn and try and avoid working with people who also are stubborn because like stubbornness i think is like one of like a huge thing that holds back so many people in this game from like not switching decks to like just like not changing up their theory on a matchup or a tech card or something like that yeah don't be stubborn assume you're always wrong for the most part uh, or assume like that you could be wrong i guess is what i should say and then either try and crack someone who's being too stubborn or just like sometimes you just got to move on and find someone else to like work with if, if they are just kind of a constant constantly stubborn person who just like doesn't want to switch it up so for the sake of I, we could keep going <laughs> we've gone on really long i appreciate both of you for the time but for the sake of time i think we'll cut it off there we skipped a ton of questions <laughs> some of which were memes a lot a lot of which were memes man <laughs> a lot of which were memes but uh for those of you who didn't get your questions answered sorry and eh, not that sorry but uh azul yeah. where can the people find you uh twitch twitter youtube azul uh gg on twitch and youtube twitter is azul underscore gg check me out there grant where can people <laughs> find you <laughs> uh at real boo ck on twitter uh boo underscore ck on twitch probably streaming some cart tomorrow <laughs> Uh, I think it's I think it's Anti's birthday and he likes to play. So, um, is Mario Kart still fifty dollars? Probably. Yeah. I was gonna say I might buy it then and join it. Eh, I Maybe I'll, I've got money. Yeah, I might don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> quick shout out to if we talked about relish. Shout out to Woozer for helping you know theory craft it and uh, Deloc for helping me learn how to play it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I made this deck. Lock, what do I do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a bad play. Dude, coach like, Coach uh, Lock, bro. Coach Lock. Are you teaching me how to play Fall Guys? Teach you how to play Relish? <laughs> Lock's my guy. I uh I owe him too much. He he's an underrated player. We yeah. didn't we didn't say that enough when he was actually on, but he's actually quite good. Yeah, the problem oh, is yeah. his decks are usually not. Well, yeah, he just good. plays it's like it's like when Sosa was still playing Yvatal Garb in like 2019. It's like just bro, pick up a good deck, bro. And then he <laughs> finally this year I started to play. He hasn't played good decks like in sense like Yuva, like Yvatal Garb was good. Um and now finally, like these last two years, he's playing good decks again. So Locke just needs to start playing good decks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. So All right. thank you for your time. This has been another episode of the Lake of Rage podcast. We will catch you all next week. Maybe. <laughs>